You recently hosted a town hall in Kent with Senator Fain and Representative Sullivan. Tell us about some of the key concerns your constituents brought up. I thought the town hall went really well. We kind of set ground rules at the beginning that we would only have a couple of questions on each topic. And so that really facilitated a, a wide variety of things. Started off with a, uh, something that I, I think a lot of people may not be particularly interested in, and that is a tax incentive for movie making in Washington. But it uh, led to a, a little more discussion about tax incentives in general that they're not, they, they get called loopholes as if they were sneaked in in the middle of the night. They were actually all debated by both houses of the legislature the, and signed by the governor. And so um, uh, the discussion was about uh, whether we should eliminate them or not. So we examine them and make sure they're getting the results that uh, we want them to have. We touched a little bit on education, as you would expect, and uh, talking about funding of them. We know the McCleary decision obligations that we're up against uh, in the next session. So that uh, was important. Transportation we talked a little bit about uh, some of the local projects that are very important to us, in particular a couple of them uh, going through Covington, which uh, I'm happy to say are going to be coming along uh, fairly quickly. And then there was one issue uh, still of, of quite contentious uh, about uh, that basically are the ruling by the Human Rights Commission that says that basically a, a naked man can walk through a women's restroom or locker room with little girls present. And uh, you know what does that mean, and and what can we do to fix that? So it was a little bit contentious, but I was just glad to see it get a little bit of uh, um, airing in public that we could talk about it openly. And uh, uh, maybe uh, my colleagues uh, next to me were uh, on opposite sides, and uh, but we still had a reasonable discussion. There have been dozens of votes taken on bills over the past several weeks, including one on police body cameras and another on public records requests. Walk us through your process when deciding which way to vote on a bill. It's interesting. They are very complicated bills because, uh, for example, I am as much an advocate of open government as anybody here in the legislature. But uh, there have been some aspects of these bills that, uh, that necessitate the bills uh, to have open government but yet some restrictions. And here's what I'm talking about. The uh, police body cameras. The police actually want them. They, they uh, use this as evidence. It's kind of a neutral witness in situations to prove that uh, whatever the policeman says happened actually happened. And uh, so that's great. The problem is, is that if those, uh, those videos are a public record and you could have somebody request all of the uh, police body camera video and that's a problem because it can be uh, crazy expensive and just overburden our police departments to produce those and so on. So there's that balance of open government and yet enabling government to function. The uh, public ref records request is very similar to that where uh, again I want public records to be open to people as much as possible. However, you could have a clerk in a small town that gets inundated with uh, records requests for just massive amounts of information and they can't possibly produce that. And if they just fall even the tiniest bit short, uh, they, can, they get in trouble for violating the, uh, uh, the uh, open government uh, regulations that we have. So we've got to have, again, find some balance that we enable government to function, um, but still we allow as much open access to government as possible. What is the latest on your foster care bill? Well, I'm happy to report uh, it's passed out of the House Committee and off the House floor unanimously. It uh, came out of the Senate Committee uh, unanimously also. It's in the Senate Rules Committee, which just means it's waiting to be pulled up to the floor for a vote. I talked with Senator Fain about getting it a vote, and I feel confident that's going to happen soon. So I'm very excited that we're going to uh, um, have something that's going to make uh, the system operate better so foster parents get notified about hearings so the courts get that valuable information from them because they really are valuable teammates in making sure our foster kids uh, get the best placement uh, possible.